Let's start today's news with Demetrius Johnson criticizing Alessandro Pantoja's UFC 301 performance. Last Saturday, Pantoja successfully defended his UFC Flyweight Championship for the second time by securing a unanimous decision victory against Steve Ersig in UFC 301's main event. Despite being the 10th ranked Flyweight and relatively unknown, Ersig proved himself by winning two rounds on two judges' scorecards, challenging Pantoja in one of his toughest matches to date. In a recent YouTube video, Demetrius Johnson expressed that he's not impressed with the flyweight champion's performance, suggesting that Pantoja would likely lose his title if he went up against Mohamed Mukhaev. When I was watching the fight, I didn't feel like Alex Pantoja was a better fighter. I felt like Alex Pantoja, he's a champ, but I felt it, it, it's like, bah, bah, bah. It, it, his grappling is his strongest suit. If you keep him away from his grappling, then he's pretty much, I feel, you can take advantage of him, right? He can't find the clinch. There was no elbows. There was no dumping him to the side. It was basically run at you with my hands down and punch and go for a takedown and then take you down. And then I feel Pantoja cuts too much weight. Even though he looks tired, he's not tired, but that's why he fights. It does doesn't seem to me of someone who's like I don't know like when I look at like when I look at the past champions when I look at Figgy, F Figgy absolute amazing champion power great athleticism when I look at him or Suhudo, he would move and move so good he's finishing people and then when I look at myself I was moving finishing people and then when I look at Pantoja it's almost like he's getting through the fight he's not excelling through the fight um those are the things I see so when I'm watching I'm like ah, I think you give Steve Ursic another year two years I think he beats Pantoja. And then that's the problem with the flyweight division is that there's not a lot of athletes there. Now, you do have Mokayev. I think Mokayev can beat Alex Pantoja because, one, he's better on the feet. Two, he has a better wrestling background. Three, I think he will be better about not making the decision of, like, hey, I can beat Pantoja on the feet. I don't need to take him down. Dan Hardy shares his prediction for McGregor vs. Chandler. In a recent segment on the MMA Hour, esteemed MMA analyst Dan Hardy provided a concise breakdown of the forthcoming bout between McGregor and Chandler. Hardy believes that despite McGregor's prolonged absence from the ring, his striking will overwhelm Chandler, whom he described as a reckless fighter who is prone to committing numerous errors. You think Conor wins that fight against Chandler? You do? I do. Yeah, I do. Really? I do. Mainly You're one of the few that I've heard say this. I just, I, I can't underestimate McGregor's ability. Like he's 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 done very special things at very at very tense and high pressure moments in his career. You know, headlining in Dublin with Brandau, he just commanded that space so well. What he did to Aldo was a, an absolute masterpiece. I mean, it hurt as an Aldo fan to watch it. He has an ability to to control and manage and and create illusions with range. Like even I broke it down on Inside the Octagon a few years ago where you look at him when he was fighting Eddie Alvarez and he and he throws a jab and hangs his hips back to make it appear from Eddie Alvarez's perspective like he's at the length of his reach. So Alvarez then, oh, I'm, I'm okay, I'm safe here. And then he steps through that reach and knocks him down. Like That's a very, very high level operating system. And that's not something that you lose by hanging out on a, on a yacht and enjoying your life. I still feel like he's got that refinement in his game. And, and Michael Chandler's not the guy that he was in Bellator when right. he was, you know, he was cautious and he was picking his shots. Like, if he plays the game that he did against, like, say, Sydney Outlaw, where he was poised and ready and waiting to land that clean shot, then that Chandler can beat anybody with that, that speed off the mark and that power. But he's been become a lot more reckless recently, and that just plays into McGregor's game. Tom Aspinall reacts to John Jones's call out of Alex Pereira. Bones is in the process of recovering from an injury. Upon his return, he is slated to defend his undisputed title against Stipe Miocic. Naturally, Aspinall is eager to challenge the victor of this matchup. However, Jones has notably refrained from committing to such a fight. The hopes of this fight for Aspinall have deteriorated more so after last week when Jones expressed interest in a bout with light heavyweight champion Alex Pereira instead. In response, Aspinall shared his thoughts during the UFC 301 review show on TNT Sports, stating, If we can get old mate John to ever sign a contract with my name on the other side of the contract, then I'll talk about him for hours on this show. Hours. But right now, the guy's playing games again, trying to convince the public what he wants and what he doesn't want, which he does really, really well. As I said, we can chat about John if and when he ever signs a contract with my name on the other side of it, because right now, let's be honest, it's not looking very likely. 
Daniel Cormier gives John Jones props on his latest callout of Alex Pereira. Speaking on Good Guy, Bad Guy, DC gave credits Jones, calling him smart after his callout of Pereira. Cormier believes that Jones wants to pick a fight against the less risky opponent in Alex, who doesn't have high-level wrestling, instead of fighting a well-rounded fighter like Tom Aspinall. He's smart. He's smart. Look, I'm going to tell you this, man. If I'm an Olympic wrestler or if I'm a national champion and I'm watching the landscape of things, valuing the money versus the fame versus the championships and everything else, I'm doing exactly what John's doing. I'm saying to myself, I have been in there with the most scary, dangerous men in the world. I have been in there with extremely well-rounded guys. I've been in there with tremendous kickboxers. I've been in there with super heavy punchers. I've been able to manage that. But what I haven't been in there with is a guy that is a straight kickboxer. And while he has improved tremendously in his grappling, no one would ever say that that's Alex Pereira's strength. His strength is a striking and he can knock you out. I love what John is doing in terms of being smart, finding the right matchup. I don't know that it'll fly. Here's here's another thing. Hey, give a hat, give a tip of the cap to the champion. Champ goes, hey, I think you're Prohashka's next. Uncle is gonna have to wait. <laughs> Smart. Alex, why would you fight Uncle Liam? He's gonna try to wrestle you. Go fight the dude that you've knocked out already. These athletes are much smarter today than they were before. And I believe that it makes for the sport to be even more interesting. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love what John is doing. I love what Alex is doing. But I think John is choosing. Dude, I'm not fighting Tom Aspinall. Do you see Tom Aspinall? Sean O'Malley fires back at Conor McGregor. The Notorious recently unleashed a barrage of harsh words directed at Ryan Garcia and Sean O'Malley, challenging them to sparring sessions and offering to pay for their flights and accommodations. This was unexpected, considering McGregor's previously good rapport with both O'Malley and Garcia. Reacting on his Timbo Sugar podcast, O'Malley responded to McGregor's outburst, expressing more disappointment than anger, and now voicing hope that Chandler knocks McGregor out cold. Yeah, that's crazy what Connor did to do. Oh yeah, f Connor. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, f Connor, man. I I seen a lot of people being like, damn, I bet Sugar's sad. Sugar always just talks nothing but great about Connor, and like he's this fucking idol. I'm like, and then. He just went on a tw little little tweet rant, and booger sugared up, talking shit. I thought he's out for a spar. I'm like, bro. Well, That'll be sick. Why should Connor at the gym? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> You're oh, not gonna, um, but yeah, I was more sad than ups than mad. I'm like, God, because it really was when you. I mean, you're one of your favorites forever. Oh yeah. Now I cannot wait to see Michael Chandler absolutely just sleep him. <laughs> I'm turning up. I'm changing up real quick. <laughs> Connor. Connor. When you're right, I've, uh, idols turn into rivals. Time for today's top memes. The third place meme was found over on X and was posted by Paulo Costa. Second place pick was found over on Instagram and was posted by Daily Dose MMA. And the top picked meme was found over on Reddit and was posted by Dismal Associate 3827. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to stay in the talk.